Hey everyone! So today we're going to be doing a introduction on Photoshop. I already have one on my channel, but this is going to be a more of a classroom kind of video where you have like part one, part two, part three, and we start from beginner all the way to intermediate level on how to use Photoshop and how to start with image manipulation, how to understand colors and stuff like that. So today's class for my for my students was basically on understanding how Photoshop works, how a pixel-based software works for image manipulation. What are pixels? How do you use RGB? What is RGB? CMYK? Uh, what is basically the pixel density, the dots per inch, all of those things. So here I have a few little displays I'm going to explain. So first off, what is the resolution? When you open up Photoshop, the first thing you have to do is create a new page. So inside of file, you have new. And when I create something new, like a new page or a new layer, you have to understand what is the width and the height in pixels, what is the resolution, so 72, 300, all of those pixels per inches, what is the RGB and the CMYK difference, and that's about it. So let's go through them one by one. First thing here I have is the display resolution and how it works. Now here it says HD, FHD, so full HD. Uh, you can call it uh, 1920 by 1080 an HD, and 1280 by 720 you can call it half HD. But still, these work as well. So let's try to understand these little differences. Let me just do something here very quick. There we go. So I can just draw. So 1280 by 720, 1920 by 1080, 2560 by... All of these are resolutions. It means that on your screen, you have a width and a height of small little squares that make up your screen. And in this, inside of these squares, you have the colors. So red, green, blue, or cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. All right? To understand how these work, it's just the height times the width, and it gives you the amount of pixels you have inside of your screen. All right? So you can see them a lot with monitors, TVs, and stuff like that. They tell you that this TV is a 4K TV. It means that the resolution, the higher it goes, the more pixels you have, the better the quality of the image will be. Okay. Uh, so when you're working on a software like Photoshop, the higher the resolution goes, the larger the file will be, as in size in megabytes or gigabytes. Okay, And of course, the details will be much more apparent. So here we start with... Let me go into a black. There we go. So you have HD. So HD or half HD, it's 1280 by 720. FHD, which is a full HD or HD, 1920 by 1080, typical uh, kind of resolution for a lot of screens, a lot of TVs, a lot of uh, projects that you're going to be doing. It's always inside of 1920 by 1080, so this is usually the one we use constantly. QHD, we don't really use it that much, but typical is 4K HD and half HD. 8K is the brand newest Samsung TVs, for an example, with OLED displays and stuff like that. So this is for the resolution. So it's always the height times the width. And it gives you these little boxes everywhere on your screen. Small little boxes that make up the colors and everything that you're going to be doing. Next, what is the difference between RGB and CMYK? So RGB is red, green, and blue. Right, so here we go. So you have your red, you have your green, and you have your blue. If you mix red and blue, you get magenta. If you mix red and green, you get yellow. And my students were wrong about this one. If you mix blue and green, they say brown, it's actually cyan. Right here. Okay? And if you mix, again, magenta, yellow, and cyan, you will get white. Okay, now RGB is usually used as screen. So here, right here, you have screen. Screen is basically meant to say that we only use RGB when we want to create something for digital purposes, websites, um, anything that has to be put on Facebook, Instagram, anything that is digital will be put as RGB. Now, CMYK is cyan, magenta, yellow. And the K so of CMYK here is black. Now, why is this used for print? Typically, 
when you want to take a picture, so let's say you have a project, you have an image, you want to print it out, but it's in RGB. The printer will have to use red, blue, green all together, all the cartridges inside of the printer to create a black. So it uses too much resources and a lot of money to be able to get that black color out, which is not efficient. So when you're going to be printing something, you have to use CMYK colors because inside of the printer, they have a specific cartridge just filled with black and that gives you that black tone. It doesn't have to mix all the colors together to give you that black ink. All right. So something very important that a lot of students and a lot of people in the creative field do as a mistake, you have to know what you're going to be doing in Photoshop before you start. So my project is I'm going to be creating something for a website or I'm going to be posting something for Facebook. So I want to create that. It has to be RGB from the beginning. If I know that my client or my company or whatever I'm working on the project is going to be printed out at some point, I have to start the project as CMYK. Because if I started as RGB and then in the future it tells me, oh, sorry, we're going to be printing this out, I cannot change the mode to CMYK. I can. In Photoshop, you can change from RGB to CMYK, but the problem is that a lot of the colors will be different. It won't be the same visual colors that you had when you had RGB. So it's very important. And all of these can be found here. So I can go into image right here. mode and I have RGB and CMYK. All right. So let's say I kept on working inside of RGB. My picture is fine. Everything is done. And then tell me, sorry, you have to print this. I cannot just go from the tick mark on RGB color and change it to CMYK. No, no, no. You have to transform everything about your project. So be very careful when you're doing this. Now, eight bits per channel, 16 bits per channel. What does that say? It's basically the amount of color being put into the actual composition. So 8-bit, typically when you're working with RGB for something that is going to be put as a low resolution, 8-bit 16 is fine. If it's going to be printed out at a high channel, 1632 is a bit preferable. But all of them work similarly. It's just a bit of a richer color that is going to be put inside of your composition or print. All right. So this is for RGB and CMYK. It's very important. So for my classroom, we're always going to be working in RGB. So always your image mode will always be RGB and make sure that when you go into file new you always start with the color mode as RGB 8 bit 16 bit doesn't really matter you can choose either or now let's understand DPI so even though I have a resolution of 1920 by 7 by uh, 1920 by 1080 I still have to think about what is the DPI so the dots per inch so every single inch on my screen every single inch will have a specific amount of pixels. And one single inch, you could have 300 DPI. So the preferable are these two. 72 is used for RGB screen. Why do we do this? Because if you're going to be putting something online or you're going to be presenting something visually on a screen, it's better to have a lower DPI so that the size of the file doesn't increase like a huge amount. We're talking about from maybe 50 megabytes to 2.2 gigs, which is a lot of size for a file. So we use this for RGB and to create something digital, it's going to be 72 DPI. Now, if you're going to print something out as CMYK, the best thing you can do is have it at 300 DPI. So you have the best quality and the most crisp edges that you can get. So this, for an example, let's say these are relative to this picture. 72 DPI goes here and 300 DPI is this one. So this is 300 DPI. All right. So that's very important for you to know if you're going to be printing 300 DPI, if you're going to be doing something for online purposes or digital based images, it's going to be 72. Okay. So the higher the DPI, the better the quality, the higher the resolution, the better the quality. So keep that in mind. All right. So this is as a start. Now let's talk about Photoshop as a whole, how does it work? It's an image processing and retouching software. It uses a lot of tools to change colors, to adjust certain things like changing the aspect ratio, the resolution, to cut this into that, to create images out of nothing. You can get, for an example, a fish, a moon, and um, a few clouds and create a huge composition, a beautiful composition that is called digital art. Okay, so let's start from scratch. The first thing about it is that this is your workspace. 
this is where I'm going to be working right here everything goes here the images the files all of that now on the top right here so I have my file edit image layer type select filter 3d view window help all of these are going to be tools that you can use Right. So your files to create multiple files, to save your file and all of that. Edit, it edits the actual image you're working on. Image as well creates adjustments. So to change the brightness, the hue, the colors, all of that happens there. Layer controls the layers, which is on the right side right here. So this entire thing right here is called your layers. So how do you understand layers? Layers is basically like a book. When you take a book and you open it, you have the first page. And then under it, you have the second page. But you are not able to see page number two unless you move the page number one. So same thing happens in layers. The top paper will always show first. And then the bottom paper. And then the one after that. All right. So how do I show this in a better example? Let me just remove this. So I'm going to create a few layers here. I'm going to call the first one one, two, three. The first one is going to be fully black. Next, red and blue. So on the layers, a few things you have to understand. I have an eye icon right here. This allows me to basically just put down the layer if I want it to be hidden or not hidden. So I can turn it on and off, visible, invisible. All right. So as you can see how they're ordered, the first layer, so the first page in the book is black, the second page is red, the third page is going to be a blue, and then the final page is going to be a white. So how does this work? I can, if I want to, hide the first one, so I hide the black, the number one, I will get the red. If I hide the red, I will get the blue. Okay, And if I hide the blue, I'll get the white. So very important to understand how layers work. Now, if I want to move layers, I can just click and drag and move it anywhere around the other layers. So now the red is on the top. It takes priority. Everything else disappears. Everything else is under that red layer. So it's very important to understand how these work. So. Let's jump to the tools on the left. Anytime I use a tool, I'm going to have something different. So under the file edit image here, so this entire section right here will change depending on what tool I'm using from the left right here. So on the top, I have my selection tools right here. Then I have some brush tools. Then I have some painting tools and some masking tools all right, and some text tools basically. So if I click on my move tool, this entire bar will change. If I click on my select as well, new settings will pop out on the top. Very important. So the move tool or V on your keyboard will allow you to move certain things. So I can move this layer for an example. I have V clicked on, it's clicked on here, top left. I can move this layer around. Control Z to undo your command. If you're working on a Mac, the control is the, uh, is command and the alt is option key. All right, so be careful. So basically here I can just move wherever I want to. Now I'm going to move to the select tool. If you notice, every single time I have a tool with a small little arrow pointing down, it means there's more tools hidden inside of it, more options of selection of painting, of colors, of whatever they have in that tool palette. Okay. So here I have a small little arrow indicating I can select as a rectangle. I can also select as a circle. I can select single row, so it's like a single line or a single column. All right. So here I'm just going to select as a rectangle. Anytime I choose a tool, I make sure that I'm in the correct layer. I'm in the black one, number one, so that's what I want. And I have my select tool activated. All I'm going to do is click and drag. And that's it. I have made a selection. Next, if I want to cut this selection, so I want to pick this little piece of black and remove it from here. I'm going to press my V, click and drag. Now, I still have the selection on my original black layer. 
what I want to do here is deselect that selection. So I press Control D. For a Mac, it's Command D. And now it's deselected. Of course, if I removed this little piece of black, what's going to be under it is going to be the red. Imagine you're cutting a piece of paper with scissors, same principle. Whatever is going to be under it is going to show. So my red is here. Now I'm going to select on the right side my second layer, number two. I'm going to go back to the select tool right here. And I'm going to select a piece of the red. So again, I am 100% sure I am on the red layer. Yes, I selected the tool. Yes, press V on your keyboard or the move tool on the top left. Click and drag. And of course, what's going to happen? I'm going to get the blue layer under it. Now, if I move a little bit here, so Control D, there we go. Next, I can select my blue layer, select maybe a circular option right here, press my V tool, and move this aside. And I'm going to get the last layer, which is the white. Be careful, though. There's a small little thing. If I look at here on my layers, you can see that my black has some small little squares around it. It doesn't show the red. Because if I turn off everything here, all of these little eyes, I will see something called transparency. So let me turn them off. There we go. So these little squares in the center show transparency. Meaning there's nothing behind it. Since everything is hidden, there's nothing behind it. It shows me those little squares. Photoshop is telling me, hey, you have nothing behind this layer. Everything is invisible. Everything's transparent. If I turn back on the red layer, my blue and white layer are still turned off. So it's still going to show me those little squares. Same if I press the blue, the white layer is still hidden. And finally, I turn back on the white. Everything goes back to normal. So this is just a small little start of how it works. Now, what if I want to have more control over how I select? So I can use the lasso tool right here on the left. I have my lasso tool. So lasso tool is basically the movement of the mouse. Just follows the movement of the mouse and then you go back from the original point. You can draw whatever you want and then go back to the source. It will close itself up. Polygonal lasso tool is basically lines, street lines. Magnetic lasso tool, I'm going to talk about it in the next video when I'm doing magnetic lasso tool and quick selection tool. It's going to be a very short video for this one. It's basically what we talked about today in class. So how does this work? Lasso tool, I'm going to select my black layer and I'm just going to draw, click and drag with my mouse. And go back to the source. Press V on my keyboard. <clears throat> excuse me, and I can just click and drag this custom shape and I can delete. So press the delete key on your keyboard to remove it completely, or I can just control D and keep it where it is. Okay. Next I have the polygonal lasso tool. So I'm going to select the red for now and I'm just going to click, 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 click. It creates geometric straight lines. And I can just press V on my keyboard and move this aside. And that's about it. So that these are the tools to select very primitive ways. Typically, we very rarely use these tools to select something, unless we have the habit of doing it. And on the next session, I'm going to teach you guys how to use the quick selection tool and the magnetic lasso tool and how they are different from each other. And we're going to start a little bit of how to use layers to manipulate certain shapes and objects to our advantage. So thank you for joining me today, guys. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next video. Bye, guys.